But right now it's good for, you know, rhythm. I can bring the tone down a bit. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Lightfoot Effects. I'm especially excited for today's episode. This is the first of a series that we're going to do on how to dial in the Fractal FM9. We're gonna go into the ins and outs of this unit here. For those of you that aren't familiar, if you look at my last video I posted, I'll uh, link it here, somewhere over here. I kind of did a quick run through on how I run the FM9. It's, a, it's an amp modeler slash all in one multi-effects system made by Fractal. It's very similar to the Axe FX3, but they put it in a kind of an all-in-one floor unit now. I've had lots of you ask how I get the sound set up for this, and I promised that there would be a series that I will do, and I will walk you through everything, how to set up amps, how to set up overdrives, delays, we'll throw in chorus, we'll throw in like a pog effect, maybe some tremolo. Um, we're gonna go through the whole unit with this series, and it's gonna be totally free to everyone on YouTube. I will be releasing these in multiple parts. This is going to be the official part one. I have no idea how many videos we're gonna do for this. It, we'll just do it until we get to the end. But for this video, we're gonna start with amps and compression. I will show you how to dial in a mono rig using one amp, and then we will also do a stereo rig using two amps. I just got this Fender Custom Shop 51 uh, Relic Tele, super sick Tele. I'm excited to use it in this series. I haven't done a review on it yet, but that's coming. By the end of the series of these videos, you will have a whole live rig that you can essentially play with. This is going to be geared more towards the worship guitarist, because that's the genre I do, but it can very well carry over to someone who might be in an ambient indie band or if you're doing like Coldplay stuff or U2 type music, if you're doing a lot of like lead guitar ambience and heavy drives still, this will still apply to you. So feel free to keep watching. But I just want to make sure everyone knows, yeah, this will be based to be mainly for the praise and worship player. When you learn in this series, you'll be able to apply. I will give you the knowledge to tweak and get the sound that's hopefully in your head and kind of give you principles on how to get there. So that being said, let's get to it. So right now all I did was open up FM9. This is the Fractal uh, software. You're gonna, I assume you'll have this downloaded and installed already. I also updated the Fractal to the newest version. So all I'm gonna do right now is attach the USB to my Mac and this will work on Windows too. They have a Windows version and it will, should look pretty much the same. All right, so it's detected the fractal now. It says connected up here. I'm on version 4.01. This stuff should work really with any version, as long as you're somewhat up to date in the last year or two. So what we're gonna do is show you guys how to do this uh, in mono and stereo. So what we'll do, if you're running stereo, plug two XLRs in here into these. I did the ones on the far right. And if you're gonna do mono, Usually the standard is to use the left on most pedals and most stuff. It probably doesn't matter on this, but I'll just leave the left in. And we will start this in mono, and then I will add a second amp for those of you running stereo, and we'll show how that would work. First thing I like to do is I have all these knobs set to nothing. I like to bring this knob set to 75%, and then I'll set my gain structure, and I'll show you how to do that. I like to have it here just because it's good for me to remember that that's where it goes. And then if I'm at a venue where I need more, I can turn it up. This, this usually gives me enough of a boost to get where I need to go. That's just the way I run it. You can leave it here. Maybe you want to leave it at 12 or maybe you want to leave it here. And then you have all this room to turn it up more uh, depending where you're playing. Like if the in-ears are clipping or if you're given too hot of a signal, this is going to be what adjusts your volume. You can assign things to these other two. Uh, that's something I don't do. I just use this one and this will control both if you're running stereo. So now we're back on the software. These all are blocks. You can put whatever you want in them. First, I have, uh, I pulled up an empty preset. Just click on the drop down for presets and then pick any one that says empty. You'll see here, I have been naming them based off of songs we play. We'll get into that more later. Right now, just pick an empty one. You'll probably see all these. You can just keep scrolling to the right. Pick empty. 
should look like this. You can ignore all this stuff up here and whatever else you see. Just look for this uh, blank sheet. So what we'll do is we'll start with an amp. You can put effects anywhere on here. I like to put the amps a little towards the end and then just right click. Okay, this is what you'll pick what you want to put into your fractal. So we will start with an amp. We'll just call it amp one. Now, if I try playing right now, there's, there's no audio. You actually need to specify your input. So I'll start all the way to the right and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna put input and we're gonna do input one because that's what my guitar is plugged into. I'm just plugged into the single input jack where you put your cable. And then we need to connect it to the amp. So to connect blocks together, you essentially can make like a virtual cord. Click on the block and then click on the little link. It's this little circle. And then it's asking what you want to connect it to. And I can move all the way over and I can say I want it to connect to this amp. So let that take a minute. And there, look at that. It made a cable going from here all the way to the amp. Um, if I'm clicked on input one and I strum, you'll see the gain meter. The gain meter is changing when I strum my guitar. So that means I'm getting input. I don't touch any of this. I let this all stay at auto. It works great that way. But as you can see, there's a lot of extra options. You can turn on noise gates. I have the intelligent one set and I just leave it all to auto. And then on the amp, we need to create some way of output. So at the very end, we can add a output block and I'm doing output one. That's where our XLRs are and I need to connect those as well. So let's connect them. And now we have sound. Okay, so you'll hear now that the amp's hooked up. It sounds really, really nasty. That's because right now there is no cab. So we need to add a cab. Right now it's just an amp going right into like a mixing console essentially. To put a cab in, we need to right click, go to cab and then cab one. And now the amp is going to the cab, then to the output. And what a cab is, for those of you who don't know, that's essentially the speaker for the amp. Already it sounds a lot better. And now we need to pick the amp and the speaker that we want to use. So I'm an AC30 guy. You can pick whatever you want. We'll click on type. And here's a great way to check. You can go to your browser and you can type in fractal FM9 amps. And this is where I go to check. I go to this list here and then I search for what I'm looking for. I'm like, do they have an AC30? And I go, oh, yes, they do. And then I click on it and then it gives me all the details about it. They have every amp pretty much listed on this wiki page so you can find them. So this one's called the class A 30 watt. So I would need to go in here and type in class dash A and there they are. See I just, to get to here, I just clicked on type then yeah, class dash A. Um, so then we can look up what are these different ones mean. They have them here. There's normal, top boost, top boost hot, brilliance, different, different ones. I would try just the normal to start with. And then, so we have our amp and here's how it sounds by default. What we want to do now is we need to change the speaker to match the amp. Right now it's not playing through the right speaker. So we need to click on the cab. By default, cabs come with two speakers. You can mix and match them. Since we're starting with mono, we will get to stereo. But since we're starting with mono, we're, I'm gonna leave this one muted. This is already muted, so we only have one speaker. Uh, we click the picker button, and here's every speaker that Fractal has. These are the equivalent of IRs. You can put your own IRs in here, but I find it's completely unnecessary with the Fractal. Everything they have in here sounds amazing. They have so many to choose from. There's no reason to get IRs unless you're very specific about what you're wanting. So what we will do is, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna type in Fractal FM9 cabs. And then here's a link, cabinet models list. I go here too. And then I know that I wanna find one for an AC30. So I type in AC30, AC30. So then I can find that there's a few here what we'll do too is we'll save real quick. If you hit this button here, it'll save 
and you can rename it also. You can go up here and type in, uh, we'll call this demo, and then hit save. There, now it's in there. If I go to my presets, it's there. So I can go, if I go to my presets, I had to hit refresh. Now it says demo. That was weird. Okay. Okay, so I really like these ones here. These are called universal noise storage. And it looks like a few other ones are in here. Um, I played around with a lot of these. I really like these. So we'll start with these and it, it has them all listed. These are the mics. He doesn't tell you what position means what because um, his whole philosophy with the fractal stuff, the guy who created them is that uh, you should just go by your ears. It shouldn't matter where the, where the mic is on the cone. And so I did that and I found some ones I like. Here's how we go through it. Um, I like the 57, the SM57. So I would look for number 838. So I go to the cab, we go to the picker, and I'm just gonna type in 838 and hit enter. And there's two of them, they have different fields. I'm gonna guess it's this one because the name matches. 2x12 class A57C. 2x12 class A57C, yep, so then we'll click that. And now we have the right cab. So by default, this is the right amp with the right cab. So it should sound like an AC30. So I am once again playing through the Fender Custom Shop telly. These have the 51 no caster pickups in it. They're very vintage inspired. All right, so let's get this uh, dialed in. So I'm gonna go to my console and I can see that it's pretty quiet. So I have my knob here still set at 75%, which is where I want it. And then I want to bring up the volume. So I'm actually gonna go to the amp. This is where I like to do my volumes. I'm gonna go to level and I'm gonna bring it up until my interface is saying that I'm at negative nine. That's just where I like to be. It works at a lot of venues. If I'm at negative nine, it's pretty neutral. It's where it starts touching the yellow. So this is only for if you are in mono. In my case, I have to go pretty loud. Most of the time, you're probably gonna be around here. When we get to stereo, this will change a lot. Right now, like I said, I'm in mono. So for my setup and how my uh, universal audio interface is working, I have to bring it up here to get it around negative nine. And I have the preamps turned all the way down on the interface. That's just so I can get more uh, gain on this. So I can rely more on the unit and less on having the preamps turned up to compensate for a lack of volume. That's good for now. So for me, that's too much gain. I would bring it down a little bit. I like to get it around the edge of breakup. I'm gonna turn this up a little, get me back to negative nine. So this here is called a bright switch. AC30s have this. I would leave this on if it were a humbucker guitar, but since I'm using single coils and this is a telly, I'm gonna turn it off. That's gonna make it darker. And then I'm gonna move the high cut. This should make it open more. Nope, my bad, that's doing the opposite. So when you turn this up, it's gonna get darker. It's cutting the highs, and this, this is bringing them back. That might be a little too dark. So what I'm gonna do is click this button to bring back in the highs. And then I'm gonna use the high cut to bring the darks, the low end back. I like that a little better, I think. The input trim, I never touched this. 
this lets you choose how hot your pickups are essentially so if i bring this down it's going to make it as if i have quieter pickups so my guitar is further away it's not breaking the amps up as much you can use this to tame a guitar if it's too hot for you or i can give it more output i like to leave it at zero just so i don't get stressed out with option paralysis not zero, sorry, I leave it at one. <laughs> I like to have it right at the top, there. And you'll see every block, every single block you click on has multiple areas to go into. You can change anything, you can change the tubes, you can change what the power amp is, the speaker. I won't do any of this. I always stay on the very top one. The further down you go, the more complex it can get for you guys who like to tweak. I'm not a big fan of tweaking on the stuff, so I will just leave it at the tone setting. If you want more settings, Ideal will give you like the same amp with like tons of different knobs. It's just too much for me, I get overwhelmed. I don't like option paralysis. So we'll go back to tone. Probably bring it a little darker. I'm getting the gain right where I want it. Maybe a little darker. I'm trying to cut off the top end. So what a lot of guys do that I know, and this is just my opinion, but a lot of guitarists, especially the worship guitarists or guys that are doing a lot of cleans, is they make their high end way too bright. When you make the high end way too bright, it can just get really, when, when they're playing it in the house, it can get really ice picky and shrill and it just it just kills your ears. Like I'm talking like this, like, like, yeah, it's really bright. When the guy at the house wants to boost you for a solo, it's gonna hurt some ears. And yes, I do agree. There's a lot of people who say, you know, getting extra highs, uh, it'll help you cut through the mix. And that's true, but you don't need a lot. You only need just a, just a little bit. You really wanna be in the mid range. The guitar, the electric guitar is a mid-range instrument, so you want to really focus on your mids and making those poke out. The sound guy, he's going to cut your lows, he's going to mess with your highs for you. Um, so this video, we're just going to get you a good all-around tone that you can really take anywhere. So what I like to do to make sure I'm not having too much on the highs is I set my speakers pretty loud um, in my house. so. I'm pretty much getting blasted with probably 85 decibels or so of uh, noise from my studio monitors. Not realistically, but it feels like that. <laughs> and I'm just trying to dial out any harshness I hear, any metallic ice pickiness. I want a, a warm, I want a really warm but balanced chord. I want the same lows as I have the same highs. I want it to be fully balanced. So I just play an open chord. I like to do like a D minor. Like right now I'm hearing I'm hearing too much top end. So we'll move that over again. Still hearing too much top end for my taste. And I think we're in a good range already where you're fine. Um, but I just like to I just like to have like no ice pickiness at all. Right there is pretty dang close. Um, and we haven't even messed with the cabs yet. I just picked the first one. Now that I have it in kind of an area that I like, I will go back and I'll try them out. I'll try all these uh, 57 cabs. Let's try A. This is another SM57. I can already hear that that's really scooped sounding. It's probably pretty close to the middle of the speaker. I'm not a fan of that one. Let's try this one. This one sounds pretty all right. That might be a greenback. If you read the manual here, for these, it says that this is a mix of Alnico Blue speakers and G12 M25 speakers. If I'm correct, I think these are greenbacks, which is what I like. It doesn't tell us which ones are greenbacks though, and which ones are blues. I'm looking for green because I like the sound of that. It's going to be warmer, not as harsh. So if these sound harsh, I'm pretty sure like this A, this is probably a blue back. It just sounds really high and you can just hear the brittleness. C might be a greenback. 
I'm not sure. It could be a blue also since we we just tamed it really high. Um, let's try D. I think I like D more than I like C. D has a punchier low end to it. That's got to be a greenback. It's got that muffled E. It's got that more mid-rangey greenback sound. And now we'll try, let's try E. Ooh, I like that one the best. That one's got a lot of mid-range, a lot of lo lower, a lot of lower mids. It's really punchy and full sounding. So we're going to just stick with that for now. I'm going to hit save just to make sure we don't lose our work. And now we're gonna we're gonna adjust a little more. I think I can get some more highs back. One tip you can do is strum a chord and then move it like this to find where the frequency is changing the most. So I'll show you. I'm hearing it change around around here, between like five and seven. So I'm gonna mess around here probably to get it started with. Still a little bright. I'm going to darken it a bit. Sounds pretty good. We can bring out a little more highs. We'll start with there, because we're going to have to change it again inevitably. So what I do next is I will do a compressor. Now, once again, we're going to get into stereo. So if you guys are wanting to do stereo, just follow this through. Yeah, it's going to lead into it. I like to put my compressor, the first pedal in my chain. So we'll do compressor and we'll call it one. All of these just say like drive one, drive two, compressor one, compressor two. Um, you will pick what kind of compressor after you pick one. Uh, just always do one if you can. And then down here under type is where we can choose the compressor. These are the ones that are based off of pedals. So there's a few. If you like the Dynacomp, they have that one. If you guys are fans of the Barber Tone Press, that's a Dynacomp. Going off the top of my memory, I believe it's a Dynacomp. If you guys are fans of the Cali or the 1176 rack compressor, that's going to be the JFET compressor. How do I know all this? Well, here's another tip. Type in Fractal Compressors. And look at that, they have a whole wiki for that. So every block you can look up what you're wanting. And we can look up every compressor. So let's see. Here's the JFET compressor. It is emulating the most famous FET compressor, the Yuri 1176. Yeah, there it is. Um, if we want to do like the Dynacomp, it is based on the MXR classic Dynacomp pedal. It gives you notes about them, how to set them up. Sometimes it does. So let's do the JFET compressor because it's it's a good one. It really is, the 1176. So right now, you Cali 76 fans with your pedal boards, that's what we're doing. If you double click, it'll turn it off or bypass it. So you can see the difference it already is doing by stock when it's on. It's taming it a little bit. It's doing the, the Cali thing where it kind of squishes it. So the attack time is how long do I want it to be until it kicks in the compression. So the release time is how long do you want it to hold that compression until it lets it go back to normal, until it stops kicking in essentially. So I think by default the compressor sounds pretty good where it's at. Okay. 
can hear how squashed it's getting. All the harshness, the highs are being uh, compressed. They're not coming out as much. So a compressor's goal is to make your low parts loud and your loud parts uh, quieter. Uh, in other words, make all your playing pretty consistent so nothing is standing out more than the other. I like to set mine in a way where I can still have some dynamicness, but it just gives me more sustain. Um, so that's what gives you the extra sustain too, is having those parts boosted so you can hear them longer. So it sounds like they're lasting longer. So usually the attack time, we can make it come in quicker. Yeah, like that's compressing pretty quick. If I bring it up here, it'll grab it in less time. I'm just turning it on and off right now. And all I'm doing is double clicking it to do that. If you want it to poke out a little more, as in you want your first time you hit it to stick out longer before it kicks in, we can crank this up to where you hear your more of your natural guitar. I feel like it's just dead right here, so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. When I have this turned up, it holds onto it so it's staying compressed longer. Where if I turn it down, it's pretty much coming in and coming out instantly. Last but not least, you have the mix here. So this is the cool thing. Even though it's dead with a, you know, with a high attack, and then when you have a long release, it seems like it lasts forever. You can actually get your normal signal back by pulling this out. So if I have that all the way out, it's not even being in effect. And then I can mix in the amount of compression that I want. So what this is here, this is your blend knob. Those of you who have compressors like the Tone Press or uh, like the Diamond Comp or what's another good one? Not the Diamond Comp, sorry, that one doesn't have a blend. Um, I, was, I meant to say the Empress, the Empress Compressors. Uh, they have blends. What I was saying is the mix acts as the blend. <laughs> So I only want enough to just give me a little bit of sustain. So I'm going to bring out some of my, my clean. We'll try halfway. I want a pretty quick attack time. A pretty long release um, just because I want it since I'm going to be doing the blend approach I'm going to leave a lot of uh, clean signal out I want a little more to squish it a little bit it on. Another thing I like to do with the compression is I want to make it the same volume as it would be if it was off. So.
I'm gonna let it come down a little cleaner. I want it to. I want to give it a little bit of room. Another way I can tell is my mixing console. Let's get a little more clean. So here's the difference of what it's doing. Here's with it on. You can hear how when I turn the compressor off, it gets a lot quieter. The sustain's running out sooner, but when it's on, I get more sustain. It all comes right back in. And then uh, we can take some of the compression out. I think that sounds great. So what we'll do now is we're gonna jump back over to the amp. And then I'm gonna readjust it based on the compression because I leave the compressor always on and it makes enough changes to where I need to change the amp to react a little more how I want. So let's see where we're at. I'm gonna play softly and try and get to the edge of breakup again. And I might bring in some more highs. So I still have my dynamics. I made sure the compression wasn't so much that it killed my dynamics. Then I'll check out the neck pickup. Maybe a little less highs. That sounds pretty dang good to me. I can play soft. And then when I play hard, it starts breaking up more. So I'm gonna save that. All right, if you are playing in mono, that concludes the video so far for you. What we'll do next is we will do stereo. So we'll continue on here. Stereo is pretty easy. What I'm gonna do on the board is I'm gonna plug in the second XLR. All right, that XLR is plugged in. I'm going to add another amp. Call amp two, 
And right down here, I'm just gonna make a little break and I'm gonna have it split. So see, now it's going down, it's splitting to two amps and then I'm actually gonna split it back to the cab. Why am I doing that? Because the cab is essentially two speakers. So I can have a whole different one for this one when I unmute it. So these are totally separate. I gotta make a few changes like input mode. I need to switch this to stereo. Now that it's in stereo, it's coming from each side of these amps. We need to go to each of these amps and we need to pick a side of either right or left. Right now each one's set to some. Let's make this one left and let's make this one right. And we'll hit save. And then the cab is once again set to stereo on the input. So it's expecting two amps. That significantly changes the volume. So what we'll do is now, this is where I was talking about earlier where the amps will be quieter now. We'll bring it down. And what I will do first is I'm going to mute the second amp. I'm just going to totally, going to totally mute it just by turning the level all the way down. Now we'll hear the one amp. See, it only needs to be at negative five now and it still gets around to negative nine over here. That one's already good to go, sounds great. I'm actually gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn the other one up. This is so I don't get two amps playing into each other. I wanna keep them separate so I can hear the differences between them. Um, now what we're gonna pick for this one, a lot of guys might wanna do Fender. Um, you can go back to that page I showed you and look up amps. What do you wanna pair with your AC30? I actually like Supro for my American voicing, and they have a cool amp in here called the Supro Trem. Um, so it is called, I'm trying to remember, I think you just look up Supro. So yeah, we're gonna click on the amp, we're gonna go to type and type in Supro. Actually, I think it's called Trem, yep, Supremo. Supremo Trem is what I believe it is. And if I would look, yeah, it says it right there when I'm being dumb. Okay. So it's in there. Before I mess with it, I need to find a cab for it. They have a cab for the Sup Supro. If I go to the cabs page here, type in Supro. They've got a few of them. They've got the 1966 Supro Thunderbolt amp. Could be, that could be a cool one to try. Uh, there's one that I like to use already. Um, I use it in a lot of my other combos, so we'll just skip to it. So I, instead of trying all these out, if I go down, uh, it's called Supremo Mix. I think that's a good one. It's a mix of two different cabs. Um, it's 095, so let's go to the cab. We'll type in Supremo, Supremo Mix, there it is. This is green because it's a legacy amp. Oh, I also need to unmute this. I don't touch any of this, but you can mess with this. You can use this to change the level of the, uh, how loud the amp is going to be. Um, you shouldn't need to touch any of this really, unless you really want to, um, and just stay in the amps. The AC 30s turned all the way down. So this is the sound of the Supro. Nope, that's the sound of the AC 30. Sorry, I didn't save earlier. We're gonna turn that down, we're gonna go up. Here we go, this is the sound of the Supro. Now bear with me, to start with it does have a lot of gain, so I'll turn down the gain a lot. It gets pretty clean. And this tone is wide open, so it's really bright and harsh. What I do is I bring it down a lot. You'll hear the difference. If I bring it over this far, it, uh, it tames itself quite a bit. One thing I forgot to do also is these IRs. You want to change these to ultra res if you can. This just gives them higher quality so they sound even better. So I'm going to bring the tone down a little more. I'm going to turn this up a bit. Since we turned the gain down, it made it quieter, so I need to compensate with the volume, or with the level knob. Yeah. 
This amp just sounds really good once you crank the tone knob almost all the way to the right, just to get rid of the harsh brightness of the telly. I'm gonna bring a little more highs through. So this is my American voiced amp. Um, I just like the sound of it. Like I said, it's it's got the Fender thing, but without the scooped mids. It's a little more punchy and just kind of tight end. It might be more similar to like maybe like a Princeton or a Tweed. Just trying to find the right balance on this tone knob because it's so sensitive on that end here on like not too many highs, but like just enough. It might be right there, or maybe even like 9.65, something like that. Let's try like 9.67. You can hear like the tiny amount of top end coming off when I do that. Um, so then I'm going to get the gain where I want it. I want it to be where I can play light. It's clean. But then when I play hard, it gets driven. clean it up a little bit, pull the gain down a bit. Okay, that was a little too much. <laughs> Back up. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. You know, I think that'll work to start with. Let's try it. We'll see how they sound together. One thing I forgot to mention is the balance. Even though these are set to left and right, the one for the left should be all the way to the left. The one for the right should be all the way to the right. That was what I missed. Same with the cab. I forgot about the good old cab. We need to go, if this one's all the way to the left, this one should go all the way to the left and this one should go all the way to the right. There we go. Now we're hearing the Supro by itself on the left side. So I'm gonna get it up a bit. I'm just trying to get it on negative nine up here. And then same with, now we'll go to the AC30 and we'll turn it up to match. I'm trying to get these two green lines over here to be even. Okay, so these are both pretty much even now. So just to clarify, each amp, one needed to be left. Uh, I like to bring the balance all the way to the left, one set to right, balance all the way to the right. Then go to the cab, same thing, pan one all the way to the left, the other all the way to the right. And then I keep this one centered. This will give you your true uh, stereo path. As in like, so if, it, if it's truly stereo, you should be able to turn one of these amps all the way down and it only comes it only comes through one side like you can see on my screen on the Apollo here but then when I bring it back up it'll come in on the other side I 
That sounds hecka good. I love stereo. I love the sound of that super amp with the AC30. And like I said, not super uh, high, not super harsh highs. I like to try and stay right in the mid area. <laughs> So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure, I'm going to try and get them both to sound the same. So to do that, I will usually quickly turn one down. And then I'll compare it to the other one. It sounds to me through my speakers that the AC30 has more highs right now than the Supro, which is it's expected. Um, so I can either boost highs on the Supro or turn highs down on the AC30. Altogether, I feel like I might be hearing a little too many highs still. So I'm going to choose to take them away from the AC30. But only a tiny bit. Oh, and you know what? We're listening. We're not even listening to that one. We need to turn off the Supro. It gets confusing. Yeah, this one has a little more highs, so I'm gonna, yeah, roll those off a bit. And I'm only hearing this through one speaker now, because I got them both hard panned. Now I'm going to bring in the other one again, make a match level. They both are a little too high, I think. Um, so just to kind of show you my process, I would go through each one and cut them a little more. And I'm just gonna do both of them. It, it may just be the AC30 still, so let's try it. I took a little more highs off the, the Supro. I think we're pretty much there. I think I'm happy with that.
That's how you can make a telly sound fat. <laughs> Just crank the lows, cut the highs. So there's a, there's a theory to this. Through the mix, or through this video, it should sound pretty balanced. Um, what I And there should be a pretty good amount of highs still coming through. What I do is I turn the sound up really loud in my mixing area. Um, that's so I can, I can get it to a level kind of to simulate if I were playing live somewhere in front of house when they boost you uh, so that I can hear kind of what kind of frequencies might come out. So like I try and get it loud enough to where I can cut a lot of highs so it sounds pretty equal. And then if I were to turn the volume down on the mixer in the room, the guitar would sound really dark and muffled. Um, so like if you're not running them pretty hot, it might sound dark. But if I go to like a big venue where they're playing like 90 dB or more, um, when they really crank the guitar, the louder they make that guitar, the more of those highs come out of it. Um, and so it just makes the mix sound pretty, uh, it just sounds, makes the guitar sound pretty balanced and focused. Especially right now we're just focusing on amps, but when we get to like stuff like lead lines, it'll really be noticeable and we get into effects and reverb. But right now it's good for, you know, rhythm. I can bring the tone down a bit. That's right where I love it. I just love, I'm a telly man. I just love tellies. They can sound so good when you get them punchy. So that's it for today's video. We covered amps, stereo amps. Uh, we covered compression pedals and just generally how to get, you know, how to get your core sound. Uh, the next video we'll go into more. I think we're gonna do overdrives next. I was gonna show you guys how to do two guitars. Um, I was gonna do humbuckers and the telly, but it just would have made for a video that was too long. Uh, maybe we'll touch on it soon. I figured the Tele seems to be one of the most prominent guitars, so this should carry over for most people. Um, if you have a Telecaster, and you can, these principles will work if you have a humbucker guitar or Filtertron, whatever. Just use your ears. Do, do whatever you think is best. Definitely just use this as a template. Feel free to copy it. Tweak it to how you like. If you like putting lots of highs in, go for it. Um, I don't want to tell you guys what to do. Um, it's just a preference I have. I like to cut my highs a lot. And uh, I like to focus more on mids because I think that's where the, it sits in the mix. But hopefully this helped you guys out. I know a lot of you have been asking questions on how to get this stuff working. We're going to go into it more. I got a few more videos coming out on how to get the full chain. This is only part one. We'll get into more about presets, how I run live. Um, once we get more towards the end, so you can have a full, full built out preset. So yeah, hopefully this helps. Thanks for tuning in to Lightfoot Effects. We'll catch you next time.